Which one goes first? What's the order? for me to not get a proper good afternoon. Let's try that again. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. We have gathered with heavy hearts, but a people full of faith to celebrate the life of our sister, Vicky Peter Linjabatis, at this funeral mass. We're going to begin with some tributes. We know we are dead hero society most times, but such is life. So I would like to call on Dr. Emmanuel. She was Vicky's past lecturer and supervisor, and she is also an interim president of the St. Lucian Social Work Association, of which Vicky belonged to. So I call Dr. Emmanuel, please. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Charmaine Hippolyte Emanuel. I worked with Vicky at the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center, and I am currently I am currently the interim president of the St. Lucia Association of Social Workers. Just briefly, I'd like to share with you my encounter with Vicky. 
I, well, I taught as a part-time lecturer at Sir Arthur Lewis, continuing ed in Viewfort, and Vicky was one of the first set of students that I taught in Viewfort. Very quiet, but when she made her contributions, they were very profound. I still remember Vicky wearing those beautiful black leggings coming to class. Very quiet, but those bright eyes and flipping eyelashes in the corner. So on an afternoon, I stopped Vicky. I said, let me speak with you. She was like, everybody is leaving. Why are you keeping me back? I said, Vicky, I don't know you, but for some reason, I see you being an excellent social worker. Why don't you go to school? She said, but if I leave the program, what will you have to teach? I told her, it's okay. I will find something to do after work. Go home. Tell your mother to give her all the documents for her house, her land. Do something, but go to UWE. By the following year, Vicky told me that she actually got accepted at UWE to read the degree in social work. For me, that is the greatest achievement. Influencing or impacting someone and they actually followed through. Of course, UWE days were hard. All those who went to UWE, you would know. And Vicky completed school. So she said to me, I'm done, then what? In all of that, I saw this as a spiritual journey for me. Vicky completed and at the wellness center, there was a vacancy for a social worker. I did all I could to ensure that Vicky actually got in that job. After all, I asked her to get her parents' property to go to school, so she needs to work. And as God had it, Vicky actually became the social worker at the National Mental Wellness Center. Life continued at wellness. Vicky continued to work very reserved, very shy, but very, very hardworking. So the only times I saw Vicky, I could actually count on four occasions. Two occasions where we did a case, another occasion where we had to settle some social work issues, and that one other occasion when on that day I was really going through a hard time at the wellness center. Vicky went into my office, dropped a gift on the desk, and just left. When I opened up that gift, it read, be encouraged and look one seven there is nothing impossible with God for me at the time I needed the courage but many years from 2014 to today the message still stand so I want to share with you and Vicky's family be encouraged nothing is impossible with God I know he will see us through this grieving period but the lesson for for me is you never can tell how far a message, a conversation, an encouragement can take someone. I am happy that I saw Vicky. I am happy that I challenged her to take, well, I need to see her mother afterwards. I don't know if she really took the documents to go to school, but challenge someone to do something great. And I can tell you, Vicky was loved at the wellness center. She was appreciated. And if you look around the church, there are persons from every department at the wellness center, from accounts to um, do, um, re records to admin, the nurses, the everybody, and silly staff and all. So I counted it an honor to have been her supervisor, her past lecturer, her mentor, and even the interim president of this association we proudly represent. So everyone, take comfort and by faith, let's believe that Vicky made her calling an election show. And if we are faithful, very soon, I promise very soon, we shall all reunite. So everyone, enjoy the rest of the proceedings and be blessed by every heavenly word spoken here. I thank you. Okay, we're going to continue with our tributes, and I would like to call on Miss Renita.
Good afternoon, everyone. This is a very tough day for us all. I'm representing Vicky's friend and also her colleague. Okay. I'm going to read on behalf of one of her colleagues and then move on to my. <coughs> The happiest people I know are those who lose themselves in the service of others. That's by Gordon and Hinckley. This quote reminds me of Vicky, as she was a passionate, ambitious, goal-oriented individual who demonstrated a love for the helping profession as she impacted the lives of many persons, including the vulnerable population she worked with. She started her career in social work at Sir Arthur Lewis Community College in 2007. During her tenure at Sir Arthur Lewis, she undertook her internship at the probation department and excelled in her studies. As a part-time lecturer at SALCC, she accompanied me, and that is Mrs. Kirian Kalix, and a group of students on an educational trip. I organized the TNT where we visited the social services agencies and toured UWE. At UWE campus, she interacted with some of the lecturers, and I believe that visit inspired her as she vowed to return to UWE to complete her bachelor's degree, which she eventually did. She has no doubt left an indelible mark in the profession and communities she served. Rest easy, colleague. Gone too soon, but your memories will linger on in our hearts. And this is from Mrs. Kirian Kalix from the Probation Department. Vicky, V, Vicky, Vico, Vix, Victoria were all names you were affectionately known by. You were indeed victorious in all your endeavors. You set your mind to becoming a social worker, and that you did to the best of your abilities. You positively impacted the lives of everyone you came into contact with. I, incredible, independent, incomparable, are words to describe your nature as you fought hard for what you wanted and wouldn't take no for an answer. You indeed moved mountains and made challenges look easy. You took initiative and got the task done. C, caring. You took charge of those around you. Not only did you care about their well-being, but you ensured that they succeeded in their endeavors, no matter how difficult it seemed. K, kind-hearted and knowledgeable were two of the great qualities you possessed, which made you stand out among the rest. E, Eagerly, you grasped all the experiences and knowledge thrown at you as you pushed through, completing one bachelor's degree and two masters. You present empowerment, sorry, you represent empowerment and enchantment. And I repeat, represent, not represented, but represent. Why? You fool. You remained and also left still bubbling with energy. As the gates of heaven yawn in a warm welcome to have you home. Go on, Igma go on, magnificent soul. Like a rain, like a raindrop falling on a thirsty floor, you graced us with your presence. Gone too soon. Like a glimmer of hope given to a forgotten soul, you helped your clients, gone too soon. Like a light bulb going off on a dark night, you left us, gone too soon. Like a lover kissing us one last time, gone too soon. 
Like your bright eyes, infectious laughter, and welcoming smile, deemed and gone. Gone too soon. Gone too soon. You indeed left us too soon. Rest easy, Vix. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to call on Donovan Bilas as he tells us a little bit more about Vicky from her family's eyes. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Vicky Pitolin, Vicky Lix, Jean Calvé, Jean Baptiste, truly did her best to be a good person. She was a sister, a daughter, a cousin, a life partner, and a friend. She was loved. There is a saying that God takes the special ones young, but just saying Vicky was, this is just surreal, but we have to accept and find a way to fill the void of this dynamo of a personality. On the 18th of November, 1986, Vicky came into this world, the last of a mother's four children, all of them female. She was unexpected, but her arrival signaled a personal victory for her mother, Miss Mamie, and hence the peculiar spelling of her name, V-I-C, from the word victory, and K-E-Y, as she was the key to her mom overcoming a personal challenge. So, she was special from birth. Or like the saying goes, so she born. She was an avid lover of nature. If you had a fruit tree in your yard and she came to visit, at some point in time, Vicky would be in that tree, climbing or trying to climb. She was obsessed with rivers to the point where she attended a wedding and ended up fishing in a nearby stream with her bare hands. Can you imagine the condition of her appearance? This situation in escapades like this was much to Kimberly, her adoptive sister's consternation, as she would always get caught up with Vicky antics, often sharing the punishment, but not the joy of the activity. Vix did not outgrow this love for outdoor, outdoors as an adult, spent many weekends trekking through the forests of Soufre and Choiselle in search of waterways and waterfalls. Another quirk of hers was a love for animals, and she always had a pet. Vicky once rescued a rabbit, which was supposed to be barbecued by her classmates on the class tour. She brought the rabbit home and named him Jack. When she came from school the following Monday, the rabbit could not be found. She finally asked her dad, who promptly told her, Jack was in the pot on the stove. Vicky was inconsolable, but she got over it. Strange how that love for animals did not extend to pigs, because Vicky loved anything pork. Vicky was friendly and playful, but still reserved. The adults would try to swing, slides and trampolines in the kids' play area would be her. She's Miss Mamie's daughter that many people don't know, and maybe that is because she did not follow her mother's footsteps. She did not follow the footsteps as an early childhood educator, preferring to make a mark in social work. From an education perspective, she was what we'd like to call a late bloomer. 
This family is very gifted academically, and Vicky appeared not to be. Not many people know that this accomplished young lady was unable to read till she was in grade three. And then still, getting good grades didn't seem to matter to her. Not at grade six, even from five and CXC. But Vicky developed otherwise. She had a great sense of fairness and charity. She was loyal and supportive. She was caring, patient, understanding. She was a good listener. She developed a strong faith in Christ. She, came as, she became a strong person who you can depend on. During her second year at Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, she came to realize her full potential. This young lady was determined to become a qualified social worker, and the new journey began. Over the years, she worked hard with a laser-like focus to achieve, achieve that goal, earning a BSc, MSc, and MSW in social work from the University of the West Indies. At all levels, she found employment to facilitate her achieving this goal, from the gift shop at Coconut Bay Resort to cleaning the washrooms at business offices in Trinidad. She never wavered ever humble, steadfast in her dedication to her goal. Yet Vicky suffered hardship. Nothing in life comes easy without sacrifice. And those letters, letters behind her name were earned with blood, sweat, and tears. It was no free ride, neither for her, nor her family, nor her loved ones as they were ever present financially and emotionally throughout her struggles. Case in point, Vicky was unfortunately robbed of all her personal belongings while making her way across St. Augustine campus one evening, and she still persevered. Her father passed away during a crucial ex final exam. She, she saw that through with honors. Still, she found time to party and play, to be an adult, and she found love. She built a life with her partner, Randy. They supported each other and lived their lives together by their own rules. She would be quick to see. Take care of your mental health. Your mental health is important. Don't keep things in. Let it out. Best believe she lived by this phrase as one of us. We were always aware of the challenges and upsets in her professional and personal life. She let nothing overly stress her out. The years spent working at the wellness center taught her to appreciate her family. This strong support system and what each individual brought to her life when she vented to Emla Storm, it was not the same issue that she would vent about with her mother or any one of her siblings. She was easygoing but refused to be taken advantage of. Yes, she got angry. And yes, she made mistakes. Yet Vicky taught herself to learn from those mistakes. In the recent past, the priority was a focus on adult dreams such as building a home on this majestic piece of property which suited her, paying off a student loan and mortgage, and building her own family unit with a partner. She became known as the Mason in the family because she would agree to attend an event, then in retrospect change her mind and she reprioritized re on the day of the event. As the saying goes in Creole, it take I buy a say wash to fair kai. She gave us enough stones to build a house. However, we understood. Our Vicky was far from perfect and tried her best to live her life, reflecting the fruitage of God's spirit. A sudden illness and subsequent tragic passing was a surprise to us all as we knew her as she appeared to be the healthiest 
of all her siblings, cousins and close friends. Having just completed a Master of Social Work degree in graduation from UWE, it was the highlight on her calendar. However, Vicky's preoccupation with and the commitment to becoming a mother was foremost in her plans for this year. And with the encouragement and support of all in her life, we were looking to the future awaiting the conception and arrival of baby Luna. And to be there for her, as well as the baby, as she went for the doctorate in a chosen field. Still, these were just plans and now we have memories. Memories of the last time we spoke, of the last time we heard this infectious laugh, of that last hug. If only we had known it was the last time like Vian or teacher Lisa, Vicky's sister, said, and I quote, People say think of memories for now. The memories are breaking my heart even more. Only people who know the dynamic bond we share as a family truly understand this heartache we are suffering. End quote. We miss her. We will always miss her. She lived in her 36 years of life. Vicky never let anything or anyone stop her from pursuing and living out her dream. If there is one lesson to be learned from this, from our dearest Vicky, is that mediocrity just has no place in our lives. There are no excuses. We must make an effort, fail and get up again and again to start over. From mud pies to a master degree. In short, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Be at peace, my little one. Rest in the arms of our Savior till it is time that we meet again. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, for those who don't know, because Vicky forged her own path, I am Miss Mimi, Vicky's sister, first daughter of Miss Mimi. And as we know, she worked, or her last was her, her social work. And so her professor actually left Trinidad to come and be with us. And so he has sent us her acknowledgement from her last paper, The Blood and Sweat. Firstly, so these are Vicky's words. Firstly, I want to begin by giving thanks to my Lord, Almighty God, for providing me with the knowledge and endurance necessary to complete this research project. Although it seemed like a long and challenging journey, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, walked alongside me as I completed this study. Dear God, I am forever grateful. Secondly, I am sincerely thankful to the persons who are part of my support system who helped my research project come to fruition. Dr. Karen Nathaniel Dacais, my research supervisor, for her commitment, wisdom, inspiration and support. Thank you, Doc, for your encouragement and mentorship. I wish to thank my significant other, Mr. Randy Mortley, for his constant love, encouragement, and persistence. May the Lord bless and keep you always, my love. 
A special thank you goes to my mother, Miss Mary Vianney Japier, for all your love, prayers, and support. May we celebrate many more achievements, mommy. Another, another special thank you goes to my sisters, Habersha, Lisa, Hervey, and Kimberly, who encouraged and checked on me constantly. Thank you. Thank you to my cousin, Hardin, who helped me along this journey. My friend, Nelisha Samuels, Thank you for your assistance, for the assistance you provided during this study. End of acknowledgement. Francine Marius. Good afternoon, everyone. Vicky made it. She did. She always told me, Francine, well, Franny, you always said education is the key, and that I will do. She made it. So I'm going to read you a poem written by Anne Marie Dola. Gifted to the world, 18th November, 1986. The 28th July, 2023, our hearts forever transfixed. Some say a beautiful life, cut unexpectedly short, for she is now shining her light in heaven's court. A little sister, as many would assign, but Vicky had other plans on her mind. And with no apology, she was going to lead, for in her life, that would be her creed. Her quest to leave a mark led to UWE, where her social work studies would quickly fly. Her focus on mental health inequality would drive her work for accountability. For transparency, she did fundamentally believe would help St. Lucians gain much needed speed in addressing the stigma of mental health. And the solution she would provide would be an indisputable wealth. But her story was not limited to loving folks as it was seen in her sharing of jokes for she did have other passions as well as the other parts of her life would tell. An animal lover she was known for best, it was in the yellow chick plopped on her chest, or her cat Enzo cuddled like a child as he sprawled across her legs, Miss Mamie's grandchild. The other part of her life that many admire was her spunk and tenacity that would make many tire. But with exuberance, this lover of life, with zeal, strutted across St. Lucia with her tallest heels. Yes, she was human and cried some tears. She embraced life anyway and did it scared for it seemed like she knew her fancy shoes would be a monumental footprint and part of her legacy. She was blessed with many sisters and brothers too, and a quiver of friends, she had a few. So she has left an undeniable, indelible mark by her love, work ethics, and her spark. As we celebrate her life, her 36 years, yes, in her honor, there'll be many communal tears. For Pixie was our miracle child who gave our spirits a lift and taught us to see each day as a treasured gift. Rest in peace, Victoria.
so as we begin finally our <laughs> celebration of life for Vicky Jabatis I want to encourage us to please cell phones on silence and you are invited to stand for the opening prayers family members Find your way to the back of the church. Keep it up. When you're reaching the back, keep it up. Walk in, sing, put the candles. I tell you that. Walk in, give them the candle, light the candle, and put it on the stand. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, my friend. Welcome to the funeral service of our sister, Piki Jamatis. We thank God for the opportunity of gathering together to say thanks and to pray that she will rest in peace before our maker. We pray for consolation and strength for family members and friends. And for ourselves gathered, that we remember 
that death is at the, at the door, it may be our till next. We ask God to help us to prepare and to protect us from an uncertain and unprovided death. We begin our celebration together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus risen from the dead, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. I bless the body of our sister Vicky with this holy water which recalls the baptism of which St. Paul writes. All of us were baptized in the Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we are buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. The white cloth, the pall, that now covers the body of our sister, reminds us of the white garment she wore at the baptism. And as she was told, and as the godparents and parents were told, to see that she brought the new life received from baptism on stain into the everlasting life of heaven. Our prayer is, Vicky, on the day of the baptism he put on Christ, on the day of his coming, may you be clothed in glory. Our processional hymn, Carry Your Candle. Carry your candle.
Lord, your wisdom governs the land for bodies. We mourn the loss of Vicky, whose life has passed so quickly, and we entrust her to your mercy. We welcome her into your heavenly dwelling and grant her the happiness of everlasting youth. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. We now listen to and meditate upon the words of our readings. Our first reading is taken from the book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. It reminds us that, as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Our first reading will be proclaimed by Dr. Morella Joseph Jabartist. reading from the book of wisdom the souls of the just are in the hand of God and no torment shall touch them they seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead and their passing away was thought an affliction and their going forth from us utter destruction but they are in peace for in the eyes of men, indeed, they be punished. Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand the truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd and I will trust.
today's reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. It says, We shall always be with the Lord. Our second reading will be proclaimed by Kimberly Philip. We do not want to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God through Jesus bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Shall we all stand to acclaim the gospel? This is the will of my Father, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. According to John, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen. Amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet 
What should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it. I will glorify it again. The Gospel of the Lord. On behalf of myself, Father Elton, who is still in the shadow, but you'll still, you'll still see him. Father Kenneth, the appointed parish priest. The parish staff and the entire parish community of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I would like to extend our prayers, support, love, and encouragement to the immediate family, relatives, and friends of Vicky, and to remind you at this time of sorrow and grief to be strong and to continue to bond together as family and friendships. Human life is made up of different stages. One of the crucial stages of life is the young to little adult stage, that is ages 18 to 24 and 25 to, and 25 to 35 years. During that time, many changes take place. Young adults encounter many challenges in the transition from graduation from college, higher education or universities, changing jobs, getting married and having children. Some young adults lose their lives due to accidents or illness. Others have committed suicide because they could not handle the pressures at home, work or or in school. The most common cause of death is always some kind of disease or physical trauma. The purpose of death is not always clear. From a Christian perspective, death is often linked with an illness or as, an, or as a consequence of sin. But we know there are biological, psychological, and social factors that contribute to death. Death is just a milestone along the way, a pause in our lives that allows us to reflect on how far we have come and what we are doing with our time here on earth. It is an opportunity to take stock and get back on track if necessary or desired. Today's gospel reading from the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, talks about unless a grain of wheat falls onto the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Your life, my life, the life of each of us started as a grain of wheat or our favorite grain. God empowered that grain representing our lives with so many things, gifts, potentials, the ability to work hard, 
He made each of us different and unique. And God's greatest desire for our lives is to use the opportunities of time, the time allotted to us in this world, our talent, our gifts, and the treasure he has blessed us with in the best possible way. If the grain is placed in a place like a drawer in the kitchen, it will simply be there with no function. But if that grain is taken and planted in rich soil and nurtured, the possibility of not just growing older, but bearing fruit is very real. Can you imagine what God has done and the possibilities God can allow to happen if we allow the seed of life to die and to blossom to become the best God desires of our life. It is in essence God, God surrounds our life we have the things that make it possible to grow and become the best we possibly can. Vicky was a seed. A seed represented by her life. She grew and blossomed. And in summary today in the eulogy, this is what he said about Vicky. She, she was a miracle baby because her mother had her as a fourth child, a last child, at a time that was difficult. And it came as a challenge, yet it helped her to overcome that challenge, whatever it was. She loved nature, trees, rivers, streams. She was adventurous, loved going on hikes, etc. A love of animals, she was friendly, she was a fair person, charitable, supportive, strong, she had a very strong Christian faith, and she was one that was dependable. What does that say to us about Vicky? In she dying and growing, she inculcated in her life values that empowered her life, which others could have seen, values that were visible, values that others saw as a possibility of imitating. As we reflect on her life today, we recognize a young woman 36 years old I had accomplished so much during that time through a sacrifice hard work through a resilience can you imagine as we sit or listen to what is being told to us about Vicky today and among them a life of sacrifice and uh, endurance in moments of trials. Tell us something about our own life experiences today. As we move to the first reading today from the Book of Wisdom, the fourth chapter, it, uh, it talks about the virtuous. The virtuous, the good, those we consider good. That those who have lived well in this life, their lives are not in vain. And they have been taken away from us quickly through physical death. And we remain uncomprehending. We do not fully understand the nature or purpose of death. Because of our limited knowledge or understanding or capability or capacity to accept death. But one thing remains certain, death to Jesus, our weakness. 
They've teaches us that there are so many things we cannot change. They've teaches us that even the most precious gift of life can be taken away from us at any moment. It says to us essentially that because life and death ought to resonate in our hearts and that, that should stir us on to recognizing the need to be able to focus on what is most important. So very often we hear of a society that is reckless and where there is so much in, in, instability, where we see so many of our young people going through the cracks, beginning well, and they do not have the resilience or strength to endure trials. In a society, there are so many attractions, so many things to distract them. And it takes sometimes many years before they get back to their senses. Or before some circumstance take them back to the focus they need to be able to keep a balance, to be able to keep balance in their lives. I believe today one thing is very certain. And that is that dying aspect, not the physical death, but the dying daily and sometimes periodically to the things in his life that doesn't really matter. And I think today among these things we have to die to is pride. Sometimes our inability to say, I cannot. Sometimes our impatience to wait. Sometimes our weakness in not being able to resist. Sometimes not learning from past mistakes. Sometimes following what is popular, although it may not fit within the bracket of our lives in terms of our priorities or choices. Sometimes just laying back, being lukewarm, just allowing the walls, the things that have built up our lives and our faith to crumble. And we simply flow like water in an ocean, waiting for an exit point. Vicky's death, I believe, is a wake-up call. One who has died so young, age 46, she, had, she did not even begin the prime mix, the prime of her life, and God has called her back to himself. As many of you sometimes may have the opportunity to listen to obituaries, their pronouncements, we have seen there is a shift in terms of the, of the average ages of those who are dying. Many more young people are dying today. Some violently, yes. Some through illness. And sometimes we ask, why? The question I believe we need to ask ourselves today is, at what stage am I in my relationship with God as a Christian? If God were to call me tonight, am I ready? Yesterday afternoon I was in Miko by my, by my sister and I got a call from the Vicar General, Monsignor Michel Francis, about sick in the hospital, a lady from Monaco. And I got three other calls regarding that same person. And I said to myself, boy, even on your day off, there is no rest. And I was unprepared, I did not even have my sick kit. I went home in library, changed my clothes, took what I needed, and I went to the hospital, where she was being prepared to move into a ward. And the nurse was a bit hesitant, and I said, we must understand the importance of holistic health. 
Chinese spirit will help now. She collaborated. She was anointed. One of the five persons who called me yesterday sent me a message this morning to tell me she had passed. She passed. In our conversation at the end of, of the prayers, I realized I know this lady over 40 years ago. Mary Raymond. We attended prayer meetings together in Monipo as a young man long before I went to the seminary. And I'm saying to myself, look at how people connect. And look at how God plans and prepares the way for those who are faithful and those who put him first in everything. God did not want Mary to die without seeing a priest. And he was able to convince me I had to sacrifice whatever it took to see a woman of faith who had lived faithfully. I believe, brothers and sisters, the wake up call for us today is to remember. Everything may be going well today, tomorrow, the next year, but it will not always be, or may not always be that way. Let us grapple with that decision of our preparedness for death. And ask God to help us to be able to, to keep in check and balance, or to keep up the checks and balances as we prepare, as we endeavor, and as we recognize so many things we have no control over or are happening so quickly that we cannot even keep the checks and balances, that God will help us to be able to tone down and be able to discern priorities. But among them, making our first priority, God. Lord, we pray today that you'll be merciful to Vicky in your judgment towards her. And for us who are left behind, you'll continue to remind us that the most important priority in our lives ought to be you at all times, every moment, every circumstance. That even in the midst of our busyness and our own preoccupations, we will never forget to put you first in everything. Amen. Amen. Family members with meeting prayers, please come forward. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to his. Prayer for 
for the repose of the soul of Vicky Peter Linja Baptist. May she know the eternal peace of God's kingdom. We pray in gratitude for her life of faith and service to the community, and we ask God to reward her goodness. We pray to the Lord. We pray that our faith in God and his love and mercy may be renewed and strengthened and that each one of us in our daily lives will be enriched through deeper prayer and trust in the presence of God. Alive in our midst, we pray to the Lord. We pray, sorry, we remember persons whose lives Vicky has touched in one way or another, that God may bring them comfort and help her memories live on. We pray to the Lord. for Vicky's family, especially all those who tirelessly offered support and care for her, that they may be comforted in their grief, given strength, hope, peace, and consolation, while treasuring the memories they have of her. May your peace, Lord, be with them each and every day. Surround them with your protection, love, and favor, and guard their going out and coming in both now and forevermore. Praise to the Lord. We pray for the nurses and doctors who diligently tended to Vicky during her illness. We also remember all healthcare providers acknowledging their ministry to those who endure suffering. May they be bestowed with divine grace to sustain their noble effort in aiding those requiring medical care. We pray, Lord, hear us. Let us pray. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of a people whose lives are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Our kingdom, we ask this for Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Yeah. 
we now have collection during this time we will sing all that we have persons for collection the bags are up front
Jesus, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. Celebrating the memorial of your son's bondless love, that through the ministry of the church, the fruits of his saving work may advance the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. To the Lord of God. It is God and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and if all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we are clean. that you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when Sabah was ending, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The real Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Gabriel our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Vicky, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that you, the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, be blessed Joseph, a spouse, you, the blessed Apostle, St. Lucy, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced with eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and let us not fall into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. But when you say the word, During communion, we sing Song of the Young Prophet.
Please stand. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant us strength and by it. Our sister Vicky may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Mary Vianney Japier, Habosha Japier, Lisa Jabatis, and Randy Motley. These are our four witnesses for the signing of the register to the table on my far left. During this time, we'll listen to a special rendition. I'll see you again. Say 
Please stand for the blessing. Trusting in God, we are praying together for be clean. Trusting in God, we are praying together for Vicky. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we will see Vicky again and enjoy her friendship. Although we will dispose in sorrow. The love and mercy of God will accompany us each day until we meet in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us comfort one another in the faith, love, and joy of Jesus Christ. Let's join in singing, My life is in your hands.
responds to the litany. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who take you, may Christ who call you take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the most eternal rest. Grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the most Let us pray. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Vicky, your servant. In the sight of this world, she is now dead. In your sight may she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she committed for human weakness. And in your love and goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is born no longer, may you have eternal rest. Let us take our sister to a place of rest, which is right here at the cemetery in Beaufort, right here at the church cemetery. A recessional hymn, Mweka Mute. Mweka Mute.
I can't say this to your face, but I know you.
before we handle any <laughs> no ID was presented to you
Yeah, the family would like to thank you for joining us in the live stream today. Have a blessed day. Thank you.